Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial, and today we are painting two models in one video. Well, technically four models in one video, because today we are painting Flamers of Zinch. This has been long requested, and we're going to be painting an Exalted Flamer of Zinch as well. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start on this guy, and then when it becomes pertinent to use some stuff on this guy, we will point it out further into the video. They've both been primed in grey sear, and the colour we're going to be using first is Pilar Glacier. Now what we're going to do is we're going to load up our brush here with the Pilar Glacier, and we're going to paint this all over the bottom part of the Flame of Zinch, basically underneath its abs and down. So we're just going to make contact up there, and then we're just going to paint this all over like this. Now we can avoid the teeth and things, should you wish. But we're basically just going to get that on there. Like that. Same again on the other side. And do not forget to do the back. This is just on the Flamers. I'm not going to do this on the Exalted Flamer. He doesn't need it. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Briar Queen Chill and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the Flames. So there's tons of these all over these flamers. And we're not going to be painting this over the exalted flamers flames. He's got a kind of fiery. A fiery flame? Come on now, Josh. It's got a kind of orange, orangey red flame on the box art at least. And that's what we like to do around here. So we're just going to take this Briar Queen chill paint it all over these details. Just like this. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to work on the blue of the body. And the colour we're going to be using for this is Frost Heart. However, we're going to be doing this on both the Exalted Flamer and the Flamer. Now, the Exalted Flamer is a little bit easier than the Flamer. So we're going to start with that and then we're going to do the Exalted Flamer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that Frost Heart and we're going to apply this over pretty much all of the Exalted Flamer, coming down to around about here where it starts to curve and then we're going to blend it into the grey sear that we've got because we're going to be doing a purple over the top. And rather than doing it all at the same time, making it really complicated and difficult for ourselves, we're just going to make it nice and easy for ourselves. So we're going to load up our brush with the Frost Heart and we're just going to start painting this over the top just like this. Trying to get a nice smooth coat. And that just by using those big broad brush strokes like we like to do. Like so. Come around here, make sure we get the inside of the arm. That way we can finish off the whole arm. Just like that. Just mop up some of that excess just in there. Don't really want that there. Right, moving on. I'm gonna do the head now. Like 
it can be a little bit tricky to do something like this where there's not a lot of dividing points on the model. So really you just want to kind of keep in mind where you've been with your brush. Don't get too lost on a particular side. So we've got all of that done to around about there. And that muscle grouping, and I'm just going to flip it back over. And come in here and get it done on that same side. I don't need to worry about this other hand because it's separated by that ball joint, so that's okay. We haven't done any other top here, so now we can just start working on that. I think this horn is also blue. Now we're going to flip back to this section here so as not to let it dry and end up with a really stark line in the contrast. And then flip back over. Now we're going to do the rest of the abs. Like that down to around about there, flip it back over, go down to around about the same place, a little bit in there that we've missed, right, so now we're at that kind of stage where we've got the rest of it to go, so we're going to load up our brush with a little bit more frost heart than we would normally, we're going to start from down here, we're going to move it into Round about there, like that, where it starts to curl, like so. And again, loading up. Same on this side, coming down to there, where it starts to curl. Just go all the way to the bottom on the back here. And we're just going to grab a large blob of it and put it, put it right across that section, like that, and like that. Then we're going to wash the brush, and then with a clean brush, we're just going to move that frost heart around so that it starts to fade into the grey here. Now this blend isn't going to be perfect because we're not trying to blend it into white. No, we don't need more frost heart. We just want to start fading it out. Like that sort of thing. So like I said, it's not perfect, but it's absolutely exactly what we want. Whereas on our flame rose inch, what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up our brush with some frost heart. I'm basically gonna do two blends on this one. But firstly, before we get to that, we are going to apply this over the top of the arms, all the way along.
like that sort of thing. And then on the body, what we're going to do is underneath here, we're going to come right up underneath the chin, like that. I'm just going to really layer this on over the top of those muscles. Like that. We're then going to grab a good brush load. I'm going to bring this down again, similarly to the Exalted Flamer, to around about where it starts to curl, like so. We're going to wash the brush. We're then going to blend this frost heart by feathering away at the transition. into the Pilar Glacier, like so. And then we're gonna execute the same thing on the other side as well. Like that. We're gonna apply the Frost Heart over the top of the tentacles, all of them, just like we did on the arm. Like that sort of thing. Make sure you grab them all. And then on the back of the flamer, might as well get this whole tentacle in now. We've got some more tentacles there as well, but don't worry too much about those. I think we should probably do that one as well, because we've already started. Like so. On the back of the flamer, what we're going to do is we come and come up to kind of where this sort of heads begin, so around about there, that sort of thing. And we're going to block it all in. Like that. And then we're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to blend into the white. Not grace here. Just by mopping off that excess and feathering away at that transition line so it gets that lovely fade. Like so. So with that done, you should have flamers and an exalted flamer that looks somewhat like this. So what we're gonna do now is gonna move on to the purple. Now We've got purple to do on both, and again, similarly to the blue, it's slightly different. So, we're going to start with the flamer this time. The colour we're going to be using is Luxion Purple. And what we're going to do first here is we're going to load up our brush with the Luxion Purple. And we're going to paint this over the top of the hands. Like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull that Luxion purple all the way down to the elbow. Kind of like that. Then we're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to blend the two colours together. Like that sort of thing. On the head, and what you're going to notice now, is it's a completely different colour going over Grace here. There you go. 
Don't worry, that is inten intentional. What we're seeking to do here is very similarly to what we just did on the hand. So we're going to cover this all over. Like this sort of thing. However, when we get to the blue back here, is we're actually going to overlap on the blue and then we're going to blend the colors together. So I'll just demonstrate that for you now. So we're just going to get this all over that head there. Then we're going to come down to around about there, like that, just by that bit of flame. We're going to wash that brush. And then we're just going to Blend the two together so we get this light blue to that mid blue to the purple. We will do the other hand in just a moment. However, what we're going to do is we're going to pop that to one side and we're going to take the Luxion Purple now on our Exalted Flamer and we're going to play, apply this over the bottom of the Flamer itself. And again, the fundamentals of this are the same as the top of our normal Flamer. So what we're going to do is we're just going to actually just turn this like this a little bit so that we've got a bit more control here and we're just going to pick a place to start. I'm going to start just down here. So we're going to come up to past where the frost heart begins. Kind of around about there, like that. And then we're going to wash the brush. Feather it together like that. So, with that Luxion purple all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some skeleton hoard and we're going to apply this to all of our teeth. Now, it doesn't matter if we've covered over some of the teeth with, say, the purple on the flamer's head, that's going to be fine. We just leave them as they are. But for anything that we haven't kind of covered over, so for example, around the exalted flamer's mouth here, like this. We're gonna get that skeleton horde all over these areas. I 
And so with that done, what we then do is we take a little bit of shayish purple and we apply this to the gums. So it's almost kind of like a black line, but with purple. So with that done, I've actually added some purple to the end of the tentacles as well on here because I completely forgot to do it earlier. But with that done, all of our base coats are now on on our flamer. So we can pop that to one side just for the moment because we've got one last one to do on the exalted flamer. And that is all of his flames. Now we're going to be using two colors here. We're going to be using Imperial Fist and Griff Hound Orange. And what we're going to do is we're going to load up our brush with Imperial Fist and we're just going to get messy. We're just going to start slapping this all over our flames like this sort of thing. You just want loads of this on the brush. You just want to slather it all over. Just like that sort of thing. There we go. Simple enough. But then what we're going to do is we're going to wash the brush. I'm going to grab some Griffound Orange and then whilst it's still wet, we're just going to go in there and apply the Griffound Orange over the top. Like that. Then we're going to wash the brush. Grab a little bit more Imperial Fist. And then we just go in there and add a little bit more yellow in there, here and there. Just like that. And we're gonna do that over all of the flames. So with that now done, We've got all of our base coats on, so now it's time to add some shades to the models. Now the first one we're going to add is Tiran Blue. I'm going to be applying this over the top of all of the blue on this guy, and we're also going to be applying this over pretty much the entirety of the flamer here, excluding the purple areas. So I'm just going to demonstrate that. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab that Tiran Blue on our brush, and we're just going to start whacking this over all of the muscles there, and we're just going to bring it down over the top of our blended section towards the bottom where we've got our Pilar Glacier area, just like that. But as I said, otherwise we're just going to get this over the top of all of the blue. Like this. And then once that's done, we shall come back. So with that Tiran blue applied all over, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some ethermatic blue and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the flames on our flamers. Just going to add just a little bit more depth and colour into these. The bright green chill really just helping to accentuate the great properties of ethermatic blue. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to apply our final shade and that is going to be some Drooky Violet. I'm going to be applying this over the top of all of our purple areas. So with all of those shades applied, we've just got one last thing left to do, and that is to take some Jean Steeler Purple, and we're going to apply this to the little kind of panels in the hands. And when I say one last thing left to do, what I mean is one last thing left to do 
to make these guys up to a war hipster battle ready. And whilst we get our models to war hipster battle ready, let me tell you about our sponsor. Serious readers, enjoy daylight indoors with a serious light. Serious lights are designed as a tool to help you see detail and colour and to enjoy what you love doing without straining your eyes to see. Serious lights use daylight wavelength technology, which replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as possible, helping you to pick your colours accurately and just as importantly, see what you're doing when you're using them. Serious Readers is a British company and the Serious Lights range is built right here in the UK. You can select a number of different options and if you use offer code WARHIPSTER at checkout they'll throw in a free compact light with any purchase in the Serious Lights range. Find out more in the links below. So with that done, our flamers and our exalted flamer are now at what I would call a war hipster battle ready. And they're already looking pretty cool. However, we're not going to leave them there. No, we're going to take them to the next level and we're going to do this by adding some highlights. Now the first one we're going to add is Gorse Blaster Green. And we're going to be using this to highlight all of the fire on our flamers. And we just want to use this to pick out... The edges of the flames which doesn't make a whole lot of sense we do have these kind of raised tendrils within each of the flames like that you just want to go around like this Picking all of these out. I often find in instances like this, it's quite useful to just do everything on one side and then flip it over and move on to the next one. So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Corax White. I'm going to thin it down just a little bit more than we would normally, sort of two or three parts water. And we're going to use this almost like a glaze. That's why we thin it down just a little bit more. And we're going to use this on that kind of bottom part of the robe, on the most kind of raised areas. I'm going to make it nice and bright. And then we can just, because it's that little bit thinner, Corax White is quite a thin paint anyway, we can kind of smooth it out a little bit so it's not a really harsh transition between the blue over the top of the blend. So we're going to take that Corax White, we're just going to start down here. You can see like that. And we're going to wash the brush. And then what we can do is just with a slightly damp brush can just smooth that out just a little bit, just taking off some of that paint, like so. We don't want this, like I said, we don't want this to be too harsh a transition. Just like this sort of thing. So with that Corax white applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna move on to the next color. And this is where we bring the Exalted Flamer back because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Slunesh Gray. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of our purple. So this is gonna include the hands, which is why we did that Jeans Dealer purple before. So we're just gonna highlight like this along the spines. across the middles. Like so. We're also gonna pick out, of course, 
the areas on the faces. Like that sort of thing. And on our exalted flamer, we're gonna highlight the hard edges down here. So with that slam ash gray applied to all of those details, as you can see, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some pallid witch flash and we're gonna apply this to the sharpest points in all the purple. So there's not gonna be very many of these because quite a lot of it is very soft details, but we're just gonna, for example, just add a little dot there along each of the knuckles of the flamer's hands. We called them hands all this time, so we'll just keep calling them hands like this. sort of thing. And there's just a couple of little kind of noses and things. You can just pick it out on the heads. Like that sort of thing. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down screaming skull. I'm going to use this to highlight all of our teeth. And when I said earlier, it didn't matter if you got a little bit of paint on some of the teeth here. Well, here's why, because the teeth are so tiny, simply acting that little bit of screaming skull on them. Immediately makes them leap out. The other thing we're gonna do with the screaming skull is we're gonna pick out any of the little eyes. You have to hunt for them a little bit. But you will find them. So with that Screaming Skull applied to all of the teeth and the eyes, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Screaming Skull we're going to very lightly dry brush this over the flames. On our exalted flamer. So with that done, just to finish it all off, the flames that is, we're gonna take some Fugan Orange and we're just gonna apply this all over, just to really tie it all together. And so with that now done, we've just got one last thing left to do, and that is to take some Fenrisian Grey. I'm going to use this to highlight the sharpest points in all of the blue. We're not going to do all of it, because we don't need to, because we've got such beautiful shading and highlighting going on already. But what we're going to do, for example, just down here, on the arm, just going to pick out those muscles. Like that sort of thing. Same for the tentacles. And so with their bases complete in the same style as the Arcane Wastelands basing scheme that we have a video here for right here on the channel, these flamers and the exalted flamer of Zinch are now finished. And well, there you have it. I've never been a big fan of the flamers, it's a shame that they're super competitive right now. I just don't really like the models. They don't have enough of a form for me. But in many ways, that's very zinch. So I actually sort of like them for what they are. But it was a good fun to paint it and a really interesting challenge. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so 
head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.